Welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. What a day it has been. I've literally just landed in Bangladesh, Dhaka, uh, maybe about four or five hours ago. But the content, as I said, ladies and gentlemen, the content has to keep flying because Chelsea Football Club, there's a lot of things going on. Finally, finally, we have a result. Um, it's not official as yet, but I think we know what's going to happen in terms of Chelsea ownership takeover, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get on with the news. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. Welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, we are not going to waste any bit of time on this. Let's get going. This is what's been happening, ladies and gentlemen. First up, uh, let me just sort something out. Just bear with me one second. Um, this is how the day started. It started off with something like this. Sources close to rival bids say Todd Bowley is leading the race to buy Chelsea. Bowley is understood to be the individual with the most accessible, available cash, which is strengthening his group's offer. I think, look... This was one of the reasons why initially I think the Saudi mob, um, they were eliminated. I mean, this is what they've been, you know, we've been told that there was a lot of debt funding. No one wants debt funding. At the end of the day, the eventual owners should not be able to get Chelsea and then pump on a massive amount of debt uh, on, on the particular club. So they wanted a particular owner that has cash available and not just to buy the club but cash available for transfers as well cash available for um you know donating to charity funds and so on and so forth and todd bowley seems to have all of that in cash so this is fantastic news and uh let me just see if there's anything underneath it yes there is uh, it further goes on to say chelsea have begun scouting and discussing transfer targets as they look to hit the ground running in the transfer market when they get the green light it's very important we are honestly falling behind our rivals who are gathering steam, talking to XYZ players and their agents, and we we need to get in on it. We have to get in on it because next season, let's face it, we cannot be having the kind of results we have having this particular what we've had this season and hoping, you know, it's a lot more smoother season as well in terms of injuries and the pandemic situation and whatnot. Indian billionaire Mukesh Ambani, who has a net worth of $96.9 billion, considered a bid for Chelsea but dropped it. Uh, business life. Ambani is very, very um, rich. Well, I should know. I'm in Bangladesh at the moment and India is literally uh, the country next door. And, um, yeah, he is a, he's a rich MF. That's not no doubt about that. Breaking this, ladies and gentlemen. So it started off with Todd Bowley, and then uh, the news started to get towards Sir Jim uh, Ratcliffe. So breaking, Sir Jim Ratcliffe has just bought a uh, just made a late uh, bid of four billion for Chelsea. This is, I guess, this was part of the Sir Martin Broughton, uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Oh, this must be. Oh, this was. Yeah, there was another. There was a British. Um, Bitter initially, this isn't Sir Martin Burton, this is Sir Jim Ratcliffe, who's come out of the blue. Uh, and I think this is what a lot of the YouTube content makers were reporting uh, as this dropped about seven hours ago, my time now. And I think there was some rumors about this particular individual in the initial stages, but then he wasn't part of the shortlisted bids. I mean, to be honest, who cares about the shortlist? It doesn't even make sense when someone like Sir Jim Ratcliffe can come through, make a late uh, bid. Sir Jim Ratcliffe is ready to send the money this weekend if required and has spoken to the UK government. He's pledged $1.75 billion over 10 years in investment on the stadium and squad on top of that $2.5 billion asking price and says he won't use Chelsea for profit. I mean, this is what everyone says. Uh, saying is one thing and doing is the other. Chelsea were close to making a decision until Sir Jim Ratcliffe came with an 11th hour bid. I mean... This is what I don't understand, ladies and gentlemen. How is Sir Jim Ratcliffe making a late sort of bid when all along it was Todd Bowley, it was Sir Martin Burton, it was Stephen Pelluca, and obviously there was uh, the Ricketts who got knocked out last week uh, or a couple of weeks ago, and then 
we're going to get to the news how Sir Martin Broughton and, and I think Stephen Paluta, they got knocked out as well. But how's Sir Jim Ratcliffe just making an entrance like that? I guess at the end of the day, money does talk. So this was buzzing seven hours ago, ladies and gentlemen. And a lot of people thought maybe this particular individual gets the job done. However, uh, as the day continued on, Ineos Ratcliffe's company, we believe that London should have a club that reflects the stature of the city, a club that is held in the same regard as Real Madrid, Barcelona or Bayern Munich. We intend, uh, we intend Chelsea to be that club. Further goes on to say, we will continue to invest in the team to ensure we have a first-class squad of world's greatest players. I, I mean, Sergin Ratcliffe is, uh, I believe, a British background, so, you know, all English affair, I suppose, with the ownership. Then, as the day progressed on, breaking Sir Martin Broughton is out due to partial loan funding. Stephen Palika is also out of the race to buy Chelsea FC. Bowley is best positioned to win, but Ratcliffe has made... Uh, a bid for 4.25 billion. So, okay, so it looks like Ratcliffe is still there. We'll see what the news, what other news is going on. But right now, you've got Sir Martin Broughton gone, Stephen Paluka gone. And I've always said it, Sir Martin Broughton, ladies and gentlemen, he's joined with Joshua Harris and um, David Blitzer, who've got 14% ownership of Crystal Palace. And that was never going to go down well in terms of that fit and proper test of owning a Premier League club. If you already own Crystal Palace, well, you need to dump those shares. Similarly with Stephen Paluka, 54% ownership of Atalanta and how that was going to go down in Champions League. I don't know, conflict of interest. But now it looks like Sir Jim Ratcliffe, out of nowhere, um, is, is made an entrance. But I think as we go on, we'll showcase the news to you guys very, very soon. Breaking, this is literally, um, well, not that long ago, to be honest. Uh, about three hours ago, breaking Todd Bowley has been selected as the preferred bidder, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, look, it was always going to be Todd Bowley, wasn't it? I think that was the most sensible selection from the get-go. A man that has knowledge of not just owning sporting clubs, you know, in terms of LA Dodgers, and they've got involvements in other, other franchises as well. But this guy, he wanted Chelsea from way back in 2019 as well. So, look... I think owning Chelsea is not just another business for Todd Bowley. I think he genuinely wants to own us. We'll only get to see exactly how much he wants us with the level of investment that he has um, that he has planned. He's going to have to make a lot of investment, if I'm being absolutely honest, because we need a huge summer. We cannot be falling behind Man City and Liverpool any further because or else what's the point it's a joke people talk about it's you know Bundesliga or La Liga or any other leagues being a farmers league but let's be honest I think the Premier League is pretty much a farmers league as well breaking Chelsea's intention is to now advance Bowley and his group for UK government approval ahead of a license for the sale of the club to be issued Sir Jim Ratcliffe's bid came too late there we go ladies and gentlemen there is only the one possible owner right now um, that is uh, seemingly to be shaping up, and that is Todd Bowley. Todd Bowley will now talk to Roman Abramovich, and I think Roman would be keen on Todd Bowley. This one, this particular group, this particular consortium made the most sense. Clear Lake Capital being their backer, 60 plus billion in cash management funds in assets. Um, they've also got this uh, particular... Um, Tottenham fan, I mean, look, at the end of the day, yeah, he's a Tottenham fan, but I think that expertise, um, I think I can't remember his name, Jack Jack Goldstein or something like that his name is. Now the name has just left my mind. But he's more, his expertise is more in regards to commercial property, and he's going to come in handy in terms of stadium de uh, development. And obviously we've got the hans uh with the Swiss um, or Swedish, I think, owner. But he's going to be probably a minority owner. Todd Bowley, at the end of the day, will be running the show. Clearly, Capital will probably be majority shareholder in terms of pumping the money. And you've got that um, other sort of that Spurs fan, Jack Goldstein, or something like that. His name is. He's going to be more involved with the stadium redevelopment. And there's talks about new director of football. There's talks about you know having having a proper structure from top to bottom. Um, making you know data analysis being the driver of finding um, solution in terms of transfer markets, 
and being smarter, being smarter. We've got a lot of issue in terms of wage structure. Some of our players are earning ridiculous amount of money and some of the players that probably deserve to earn that money is leaving the club for free. Chelsea's new owners will now prioritise talks with Thomas Tuchel. Tuchel has made it clear he wants to stay, but he wants to work with owners who want to win. Tuchel wants assurances over the summer plan and the size of his budget. I mean, look, I did a stream yesterday, live stream yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, where Thomas Tuchel made comments, uh, I believe, post-match against uh, West Ham. And he was saying that, look, at the end of the day, he wants to say he's very committed to staying at Chelsea Football Club. Chelsea Football Club is still one of the biggest clubs in world football. Once we get this ownership situation sorted, we've got the infrastructure ready to go. We've got a state-of-the-art, probably one of the best academy that you can select some top, top um, you know, players from there some really, really good coaches that's within the backroom staff. We've got everything. We just need an owner that believes in the situation, believes that this club can become a global brand. And this is something Tom Bowley is massive about. He's talk, he talks Chelsea in terms of a brand. And I think he can take Chelsea to that next level, make it a huge brand and, um, you know, really, uh, really put an impact. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. These are some of the latest news that's going on. Look, Happy days. Todd Bowley should be the winner. Hopefully, it gets announced very soon. Apparently, now the conversation will go towards Thomas Tuchel, where he'll get an understanding from Todd Bowley as to what level of um, investments that's going to happen. And I hope Todd Bowley um, gives Thomas Tuchel some feel, a, a comfort that, yes, there will be investments. Maybe not. And I think Thomas Tuchel said this as well uh, in, in the post-match press conference against West Ham, oh, you know, after that, or not straight after, but uh, a, a day or two after. He said that, look, he doesn't expect 250 million budget, but he expects something so that we can rectify the situation we have at the moment. Rudiger's leaving, Christensen's leaving, possibly other players leaving as well. We have to make sure we bring in quality in order to in order to um, compete next season. And I hope Top Bowley gives that you know, comfort that he is there. He will make sure that he 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 invests on the particular team. And on, on top of that, I hope Todd Bowley gives Thomas Tuchel a long-term contract as well. Uh, I need this particular manager to stick with us. When you hear news like Jurgen Klopp, another two more seasons on top of the two that he already has, I think his contract was meant to end at 2024. Now he's going to be there till 2000, 2026. You can see the kind of effect Jurgen Klopp has had on Liverpool, the, the the team he picked up, the team he then made, and the team he's evolving right now, it's only going to get scarier and scarier. And I think Pep, if he sticks around, Man City are going to get better and better. So we need to ensure we keep Thomas Tuchel and we keep helping him out. Even if it's on 250 million budget, ladies and gentlemen, we need to ensure we give something to work with and then from here on, we cannot mess about in the transfer market, ladies and gentlemen. We need to have solid, solid transfer windows coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know how you feel about it. I'm really, really excited with Todd Bowley coming in uh, into the scene. This should be, and it is going to be, the perfect case scenario in terms of ownership. I'm very delighted. I can't wait till next season. Honestly, this season, it's been a disaster with everything that's been going on. So I just, I'm looking forward to the FA Cup and after that. Lights out. We look forward to the summer. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button if you have. If you're here for the first time, subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. As I said, the content is going to keep flying in. It doesn't matter where I am. Well, what, baby? Catch you later.